Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect, this state-of-the-art co-working space and tech lab helps grow innovative ideas from applied research, development, testing, and engineering qualification to communication and market launch. Our speaker is Petra Meyer. Petra is an online, Petra is an online learning expert and group coaching profit accelerator consultant. She works with high achieving professionals who are serious about incorporating online courses and group programs into their operations service offerings. These include coaches, consultants, and experts. I invite you now to put your hands together and give Petra Meyer a warm, warm Vancouver Business Network welcome. everybody and welcome to BBN and to today's talk. We will be talking about online training, but not just online training. We want to talk about online training that helps you to scale in your business, your impact, your influence, and subsequently your income. I want you to be the superhero in your business. Now who wants to be the superhero in your business? Yes. So what does it actually mean to be a superhero in your business? When we're superheroes, think about the superheroes that are out there in the comic world. What do they have? They overcome they have obstacles. obstacles. Yeah, they overcome obstacles. Our secret power. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What else? What else is important for a superhero? They save people. They save people. Yes. Anything else? Special powers. They have special powers. Special friends. Special friends, yeah. Superman clothes. Superman clothes, yeah. So obviously we wear Superman clothes here too. What they do is they have impact. When you think about the superheroes, how they fly through the world and save everybody and bring all the good that they have to people, they have an impact on those people. Now superheroes, we heard it, they have special friends. So they have influence. So as influencers, they have others who are also impacting their people, the people that they know. So a superhero in the business has impact and has influence. And in your business, when you have impact and influence, you will automatically also have income. So today we want to bring that down. Well, what is it that you need to do to scale your business so that you have more impact, you have more influence, and generally you have more <coughs> income because of that. So before I start going into those three different areas, the three eyes, as I said last <coughs> week when I was here, well, before I go into the three eyes, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about how I got to speak here, how I, the journey that I took to come to here. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. I know I know some of you really well, and others I don't know, and we've only just recently met or met to my day. When I look at my business journey, certainly this quote, the only constant is change, really applies to my business. I started my business end of 2011. I came from a corporate background. I worked for the One World Management Company, which is the management company of the One World Alliance around American Airlines and British Airways. And during that time, my last position with them was e-commerce management. They decided to close the Vancouver office and move to New York. Uh, that big decision to make, there was you know, change really there already. The big decision to make, do I move to New York or do I stay here? And I didn't immigrate to Canada to live in New York. So I decided I'd start my own business. And I looked at a number of different opportunities and I was very lucky that very quickly after that happened, I had a contract position with Rocket Money. And based on that contract, that allowed me to explore so many new things in my business because I had something that was providing me with some regular income. It was a lot of fun doing. I made new, great connections, such as Monica. And um, I also had the opportunity to explore other things that I could do in my business. And that's when I uh, learned about coaching. I had no idea about coaching before that. So I learned about coaching and I did my coaching certification. 
And that again was a trigger for me because when I was uh, introduced to coaching, I realized I love working with groups and I love working online because what I have is my big goal and that big goal <laughs> is almost emotional for me. And I can test this at home and I'm really strong when I say it, but here it's always like, gosh, I want to be location independent. Having online programs really helps you to be location independent. Now why, you might ask, do you want to be location independent? Well, I immigrated from Germany. And my family is still up there. And on some days, it's a little easier than on others. Anyway, the location independence is my big goal. And everything I do in my business, I check against that big goal. And I suspect you all have big goals in your business. Something that is that driver, that might be the emotional thing when we talk about that. So for me, it's the location independence and for building a business that allows me that I can be anywhere and look after my clients that I can be um, doing this from any time zone, from any location. And that's been the driver for me when I decided about the different changes I was undertaking over the last eight, nine years now. So in the meantime, things have changed a little bit. I've tried um, you know, a number of different things. I was initially a consultant. I was working with, thank you. I was working with uh, clients who wanted to create a website, but didn't really know how to get started. I, um, apparently I've got too many tears in my eyes and I need to do this. Okay, so that should be better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so when I did the location in, oh, sorry, go back to where I was. Um, when I uh, consulted companies on, on website strategy, I realized that a lot of companies didn't really understand why they needed a consultant to help them through the process of developing a website because they go to a web developer, right? And they didn't know that there's a lot of things that you have to decide internally before you speak to your web developer. So the coaching came in and I started working with clients in uh, groups and I started developing programs and somehow, and I do not remember when and how this happened, I made a decision to create programs about creating programs. I have no recollection of making that as a conscious decision. I'm often asked, how did you decide to do that? I just suddenly was there. So sometimes change happens so gradually and so automatically that you're not even aware of the change that you're making. Now my business has gone through constant change and is this year going through another big change. And when I come towards the end of our presentation today, you will see the effect of some of that change. Um, when I tell you a little bit about ways of how I can maybe support those of you who said earlier, you want to create online training but some of you said, I don't really know how to get started with that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to tell the wealth of the information that I have, the knowledge I have, and structure it in a course, in an online course. And that's, you know, honestly, that's, I think, one of my sweet spots, one of my specialties, to cut through that and to be very clear about how you can take your knowledge and package it into an online program. Now, some of you also said, I have nothing to offer or there's nothing special about what I do. And I doubt that seriously. That is not the case. Everybody of you, you're all unique and you all have your way and of, of presenting your knowledge and of working with your clients in a such a unique way that that is the perfect way for some people out there. And that's your ideal target audience. And I'll speak a little more about that. So I wanna to get to the three eyes, the impact. So I said, you know, we want to scale up the impact, the influence, and the income. So what do we need to do to actually scale that impact? What can help us to increase impact? So imagine you're working now with a number of clients one-on-one, -on -one, and you're a coach. A lot, a lot of you were coaches, and you, if you do that work, maybe how many clients can you work with for, you know, ultimately over, let's say, over a month term? What's, a, what's Monica for you, perhaps? What would be a good number? 15, 20. 15, 20. Daryl, how about you? 
What's the wrong box? 1015 people. Yeah, 1015 people. Anybody else? Yeah. So 1015 people. I mean, that can be impactful. But imagine if you could do and work with 150 people. Imagine what you could do if you could work with 1,500 people in that month or even more. So depending on who you are and how you like to do your services, it's going to be very different if you want to go with a small number of people, a big number of people. That's very unique. That depends on you. But how do you increase impact? The first one is the number of people you work with. So if you just imagine going from 10, 15 to 150, you're 10xing that impact that you have. So that is huge. So if you think about what could you do to reach more people. The other thing is not only more people broader, you can also go deeper. You can work with people on a deeper level. So weight loss comes to mind. So if you work with people on weight loss, that's one area. But imagine you now work with that same person on their fitness, on their sleep patterns, on how they hydrate themselves, on their mindfulness, on their overall ways of outlook and their happiness, and you spread it beyond them to their people that they're influencing. How much more impact will you have in your business when you take what you're doing deeper and you work with them on a, on a deeper level and you look at the topic, not so superficially, but really think about how can I make a bigger impact or a bigger transformation for my clients. And that's what I'd like you to think about when you're thinking about, okay, I want more impact. What is it that you would like to do? More people or more depth or both? So what's the key of doing that? You will find other mentors who have other, uh, other uh, techniques of how to achieve that impact. But in my area and what I advise my clients is to think about online programs, to create online programs. And online programs, I want to define what that actually is. Because a lot of people say online programs, or they think about, oh, it's just videos. And that's not necessarily, in my books, the case. So you can do online programs in a very different way. I consider it as being something that is on a continuum between delivered 100% live to 100% automated. Consider that as being a continuum. <laughs> and if we want to have our increase of impact because we want more people, we want to go from that 15 to 150, you're more likely to move towards the automation side of things. Because when you're handling a lot of people, then you have to start automating some of them. You have to start providing them some of the resources in an automated fashion. If you want to instead go for more depth, and you want to perhaps bring um, multiple programs that help your clients on the journey that they're at, then you may deliver more of your activities live. And when I say delivering live versus automated, live components could be a training call, a Q&A call, a VIP day or a seminar. You might even do some of them in person. You might add a, a retreat or you might bring in guest speakers and trainers. You expand on the program and that all delivers already more depth. On the other side, or you could even do include private coaching. It doesn't all have to be in a group. On the other side, on the automation side, you typically have videos, audios. You might add in meditations, depending on your topic. You might bring in downloadable worksheets that help your client to actually work through the, the content that you're providing. Assessments, quizzes, how-to sheets, cheat sheets, templates, anything that makes it easier for your clients to work with the content that you're giving them. So when we're thinking about an online program and you're somewhere on this continuum, and this is where I always think this is your creative moment because you can be anywhere with your programs on this continuum. How you choose to deliver your course, that's totally up to you. And that's why I don't believe in this cookie cutter way that is often out there do it, I've done it this way, I was successful, you must do it my way. I don't believe in that. I believe in really understanding who you are and who your clients are and defining the programs that are the perfect match. What I often say about business strategy in this field is that it's like a bridge. And the one pillar of the bridge, that's you. That's the position that you have. 
That is what is important to you, to, for your lifestyle, for how you want to live, your location independence, whatever that might be for you. And then on the other side of the bridge over that river that has raging water in it, that's where your clients are. And your clients have specific needs and specific challenges and problems. And the bridge that you're building across that, that's built out of your services and your, your programs. And those are the building blocks that, that bring that you to your client. That bridge should not go in zigzag across that river. It should be a straight line. And in order to build the bridge, you need to know where the pillars are. Wouldn't you agree? Is that right? If you know where the pillars are, if you know where your pillar is, where you are, what you're, what you're needing, and you know what your client is needing, then the programs almost automatically occur. Maybe that's why I don't remember when I made that decision how to do it. So it's that process of deciding what an online program is for you. It's very unique. Your program will be very different to anybody else's program, at least in my books. So for example, my client, Leslie, she is uh, from Victoria and she's a Pilates instructor. Now, we've ever been in, who's ever been in a Pilates class? Yeah, typically where's the instructor? Right there with you, right in the room with you. So if you are a Pilates instructor, you're often very bound by the location your clients have to come and see you either in the rec center or in the gym, or maybe in her case, she had a little, uh, little fitness area in her house. But you're very limited, aren't you? Your market is limited. Your people are close to you, they know you personally. So when she started working with me, she developed her first online course. She didn't even know how to create a PowerPoint presentation, to be quite honest. She created an amazing course, beautiful PowerPoint presentation with voiceover and also videos of her demonstrating these exercises that she was teaching. Her course is called Laugh Without Leaking, and I'm not telling you what it is all about. <laughs> and um, what happened for her is it really changed her business. It changed her business that um, she now can market globally because her course is available online to anybody, anybody who needs this. And there's more people than you would imagine. And she can also package it up with her VIP services. And that becomes a different program, a different course. And she can offer that very personalized. She can do it with people in her local market, and she can still also go online and do this training with them online. So having an online course, she actually once said that that made her look at her business in a different way. She finally looked at her business as a business and no longer as a hobby. Roger. Did anything interesting happen to Leslie as a result of a customer buying her program? Yeah, so what happened? So your question is if anything interesting happened as a result of clients buying her programs. Well, what happened is that she now can deal work with clients outside of Victoria. She's not linked locally anymore. She has gotten speaking gigs that she now does uh, public speaking outside of Victoria as well. And so she really has a totally different profile of her business, that now that she has programs, she's seen as an expert. Having a program automatically classifies you as an expert in the business. Similar to, you know, everybody always says, you've got to have your book. An online course will do the same thing as a book. Plus, you can make money with it, with books. So thank you for the question, Roger. Um, so what is it that you need to do in order to use your online training and actually create an impact? Well, you need more than one course. I hate to tell you, if you're just thinking about, I'm just going to do this one course, a little like, I'm just going to write this one book, that's not going to solve it. Particularly not if you want to have the impact and go into depth. If you want the impact and go into the masses only and stay on the surface, Maybe so, but if you want to deliver depth and real transformation, you will have multiple programs to do that. Now, ideally, when we do multiple programs, in this case, it might be an online course, a group program, a fun for you service, a one on one service, and all these other little periphery ones. You don't really want them floating around like this balloon in air. You really want some strategy behind it. And I call that the signature leverage system. And what I like using is, an, um, is the arrow as a symbol for that. Because an arrow typically has one pointed end of it. 
And that's where we want to go. So when you're thinking about that pointed end, that is the final ultimate service that your client has with you. You typically start the client interaction with something that is low cost or maybe even no cost. Something that they that they download or something that they have access to online because they are interested in your topic. Then we typically have a program that is perhaps still quite low involvement of your time and therefore a fairly low investment for the program. And then it goes into something that gets you more engaged. You're spending more time with them. You might even have one-on-one -on -one conversation with that client, or at least you have interactive activities like a group call. And then ultimately it leads to a VIP service. That service that we want to lead to. Now the, the magic about the arrow as a symbol is that one needs to lead to the other for you to easily build one on another so that you're actually creating that depth and that impact through depth because you're taking the person from one level to another. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah? Okay, you've got a question, Francis? Yes, yeah, so are you talking about the different tiers of systems, so the low cost and higher cost, and suggesting that they should be all linked together in yeah. one way, so products would be? Yeah, so yes, exactly. So Francis is asking if I'm talking about linking those services, like a product suite, and yes, I am. And they're not only in a change in pricing, it's also a change in involvement from their end and involvement from your end. So if you're the expert, you might have the, the low cost programs might be totally just recorded programs, but the higher end programs have access to you and your time. And then at the very end, it might be a one-on-one -on -one service. It might be a consulting service or a done for you service, depending on the industry. Yeah. And in order to, you're, you're almost gently bringing the client to start working with you and go deeper and deeper and deeper in, in the work they do. They do. Is it possible to sort of hourly value at the pointy end of the arrow? Well, it depends on the industry. And in some industries, you ultimately, we want to get away from hourly value. Ultimately, you want to offer a package, a program that is really rated price based on the value that the program delivers. And how we, how we deliver that program, that's part of the um, course creation side of things of what we want to in implement into the program. But if you are, let's say, doing a business to business and you have a business to business um, uh, course and your client is going to make a million dollars with the knowledge that they are learning from you, you can charge something different than if you are in the health industry and you're, um, you're marketing your program at a, the end customer and they, um, are, are, uh, you know, they don't have the, the funding for that. So you have to do your pricing. There is no one size fits all pricing. The, the pricing also needs to fit your bridge, where you are, what you want to earn, and where your client is, what the needs are, and how you're building your programs to deliver the value. Yeah. For some coaches, that end tip of the, the, the arrow is a $100,000 one year program. But that's not going to be applicable for everyone. For some, it's perhaps a $2,000 program. So it really depends. Now, what we need, though, is in order to be able to do that, we need to understand who our ideal audience is, because otherwise we don't know where that bridge is going to go. We also need to then have a lead generation in place, and the lead generation needs to attract that ideal audience, not other people. Sometimes our lead generation isn't targeted enough. We're attracting people to us who then aren't really an ideal client. They keep us busy, and we don't have time to work with our ideal client. So very important that we do that and it's well aligned. And then ultimately that needs to lead to your program strategy. So if we have a lead generation strategy in place that attracts the ideal client, it should automatically take them into the funnel towards our programs and towards that tip of the arrow. So if we do this and we have this impact on our client, then we're actually building influence as we're doing that. We're influencing clients in their way of doing things, in their, you know, their habits about their, their eating habits, let's say, if we're in, in the weight loss game, or in their habits about dealing with past, past issues that have come up, or in their marketing activities that they want to do, or in leadership and how they're leading their team, whatever the topic is. So we're now influencing that person. 
So influence can show up in interesting ways. Um, a few months ago, I was at a book launch of one of my clients, and that client had, while she was working with me, created a course. And I was introducing myself to some of the attendees at the book launch. And when I said what I was doing, one woman said, you impacted me. I've never seen her in her life. Well, she was in my client's program. So I influenced my client to do something and to ultimately create a course. And she then impacted her client and that client recognized that I had impacted her. So when you are creating courses, even if you have a course for 100 people, you might influence thousands and thousands of people with your programs through the work that you are doing. So don't look at yourself as being somebody, I don't have anything to give. You all have a tremendous amount to give. And it's about constructing your bridge so that you can reach your client. So I want you to just uh, see this really openly and look for the opportunities and not for the closed doors, you know, not for the ones holding you back. So the very first thing is you need to be really clear who your niche is. How clear is your niche? You know, I don't actually believe that we should only have one ideal client. I like variety. I work with a number of different clients. So it's, I personally don't think that you need to cut out all your other clients, but it's, you have to be clear about how you're helping each one of your clients. And ideally there is some co common thread there. So how do we want to target our clients? Well, we want, need to know demographics, psychographics, and sociographics. You might say, oh, what are all these graphics? What does that really mean? I found this beautiful image that I think describes it. So demographics really goes for kind of the numbers, the age, income, uh, the education, what the employment status is, maybe even if they, where, where they live, or maybe if they have family members. Um, so that's really the numbers in some ways, something that can be expressed like that. Psychographic, that cuts that group into subgroups through assessing the needs and interests, activities, attitudes, and values. And then sociographics, this is almost when we're going to the one-to-one -one marketing. You know, this was a term that when, now I'm dating myself, when I went to school, we were talking about your marketing really should be one-to-one -one marketing. So I'm speaking very specifically to each one of my clients because I know them so well. So when you go into sociographics, you look at personal needs, their personal profile, their attitudes, their groups that they hang out with, their friends, who they influence and who influences them. So those are the graphics. Now this is almost like the basics in understanding who your target audience is. I wanna go beyond those basics and I really wanna understand what my ideal client's pain points are. We all have challenges. Now do you sometimes wake up in the middle of the night and the very first thing that comes to your mind is a problem that you presently deal with? Who's ever had that experience? Yeah. As we get older, we have it more often, I've noticed. So those are pain points. Those are the challenges that we're all dealing with. We all have challenges in our lives, and those are pain points, and they keep energy from us. We want to solve them. We want to get out of the way. I want to sleep. You know, just leave me alone. Brain, shut up. But they keep coming back to us. We want to know our client's pain points, particularly, of course, in the areas that we solve. I also want to not just look at the negative side, I also want to look at the positive side, the aspirations. What is it that they're wanting? You know, what's their desire? You know, when they daydream, when they're walking on the beach, thinking about themselves, their smile comes up. You know, that's when they're thinking about the aspirations, their goals. We want to know what those are because those, the language that we have around the pain points and the goals, that's the language that A, gives us the idea of what we want to serve them with, what the bridge looks like, the building blocks, but also the language for marketing to them. How do we get them to understand that we've got something that they want? And then we wanna know who their influencers are and who they influence. We really want to understand them um, from a perspective of what is important to them? Who do they listen to? Where do they hang out online or in person? And those are all important uh, aspects that influence them, that make them who they are. And then the last one I want to talk about is the triggers. So when we have something 
I, I love weight loss. Let's just talk about weight loss. <laughs> weight loss is that everybody knows weight loss, one way or the other. So I want to lose some weight. There's chocolate. Let me just eat that chocolate. Ah, oh, damn, I ate the chocolate again. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow. But there is a moment where something happens that I will not eat the chocolate. So what is that trigger? Maybe somebody said, are you pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> Who has not ever either been asked that or by mistake asked somebody, oh my God, one of the most embarrassing things that can happen in your life will haunt you forever. Well, that's a trigger. That's a real trigger. Now, you might not say, well, if somebody asks you if you're pregnant, if you're pregnant, then now is the time for you to come in to my weight loss program. But, you know, those are the triggers when we understand what makes the person move and change what their habits are and what they're doing. So that's really important for us just to understand. And uh, I have a program where I help my clients to go through this process and to go through all these areas so that they really understand who their audience is. Tina Marie was one of my clients. She's an educator in um, open school system. When she came to me, she really struggled with who should she be working with. She likes to work with the parents. She likes to work with the children, the, um, the kids in the system. But she also likes to work with educators. And she initially thought like, oh, I, I can only work with one of them because everybody says the target audience needs to be one target audience. This is where I'm like, no, nah, not really, because the parents are the ones who are going to hire you because they're paying the bill. It's the children are the ones who are coming to you. So they're also the client. And the educator is the one who might be mentioning to the parents that this program that you have exists. You're also a client. A client can be the person who makes the connection, the introduction. And it could also be somebody who wants to learn her system so that they can use it, like the educators, for example. So when she went through this process with me, she was so relieved that she didn't have to let go of any of the target audiences because they were really important to her. What is important though, is that we understand how we serve each one of those audiences. And we also need to know if we ever have audiences that are negatively impacting each other. So I give you one idea of, or one uh, idea of, of a thought process that I teach in my course, and that's about uh, multiple audience syndrome. So when you work with a lot of different audiences and you think like, okay, is this, is this gonna work? So think about you have one or two of those audiences that you come and you invite for a dinner party. So they all come to your house and you make a beautiful dinner, you decorate it beautifully, you have your best crystals out and polish the, the knives and the forks and everything is sparkly. And you then think about where you see everybody. Now, if you have to start thinking about that you can't have Joe sit next to Susan because they'll scratch each other's eyes out, then they are not target audiences for you to you go on to beyond. They, are, they have such different value system that it is not an ideal case for you to work with both these audiences under the same brand. You may need to separate them by a different brand. An example is, let's say, a lawyer who works in the HR field and is supporting the, the management and the union. <laughs> Might not work because you don't become really important. So think about if you have multiple audiences, they're impacting each other in a negative way. Now, what's the outcome of doing all this? The outcome is that you create what I call a persona statement. And a persona statement is a way to describe your ideal target audience as if you were telling your best friend about that ideal client of yours. When you tell your best friend, you go a little beyond what your NDA allows you to do, and you, you know, you may mention the name and you mention, you know, what the struggles are and and something that you maybe have heard in confidence about that person. But you're describing that person in a way because you really know them intimately. You know kind of what their situation is at home, like the, the graphics, you know all that. But you also know what their pain points are and what their challenges are and their aspiration and what would trigger them to do something different. If all that shows up in your persona statement, it will be a guiding statement for you a for your product development because then you create a product that serves that client in the best possible way but also for your marketing 
because then you use language that will really be speaking to that ideal customer because you speak to their pain points, you know them. So that is something that is really hugely important in working in online programs is to get clear on your ideal client. Now, once you have that clarity, we said, and then you use that in order to build your courses. Now, very often, and I've heard that today, you know, how do I structure it? How do I get started? When you're building courses, you need to think about how you use all that content, all that knowledge, the mass of information that you've accumulated and put it into a program that can really help your client get the transformation that you want to deliver. Because remember, you want impact. So we have different learning styles. We all have those four different learning styles in us. We all uh, appear differently when we are consuming new information. But we all have a preferred learning style. And as, as trainers and course developers, we also have a preferred learning style. And we tend to go to our preferred learning style and teach our courses according to our preferred learning style. And what that means is that if I do my preferred learning style, the four of you are going to love it. <laughs> and the rest of you are going to say, I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't know what she's talking about. Because you're not actually feeling engaged enough. So when we create programs, we want to uh, create our programs to appeal to all these learning styles. The first one is the imaginative learner, and they love to ask the question, why? So why is this important to me? Why would I need to take this course? How is it going to help me in what I want to achieve? So they want to be reminded of their purpose. The analytic learner asks the question, what? They come to learn a lot of new things. They want new information, facts, figures, etc. So they will ask you a lot of details even before they register. They want to know, okay, how many lessons are there? How many videos? How many video minutes? When are the calls? Where do we meet? All those kind of detailed questions, you already have an indication you have one of those analytic learner. The third one is the common sense learner. And the common sense learner asks the question, how? So they ask the question, how am I going to do that? How am I going to get that transformation that you promised in this course description? And how are you going to help me to do it? And then the dynamic learner asks the question if. Okay, if I do the course and I do all that, how is it going to impact me outside of this course and other areas of my life? They want to transfer that into these other areas and really learn how that is going to help them beyond the course and the topic of the course. So when we create courses, we want to create the courses to appeal to learners of these different learning styles. And when we're doing that, when we go through a planning phase of our course, we want to start with the end in mind. We always want to think about what's the ultimate outcome of the course. So we first ask ourselves, if they do this course, what effect will it have? If they do the course on weight loss, what effect will it have? Will it change their habits? Will they have lost weight? Is that the effect they have? Will they just be more knowledgeable about it? So that depends when we are on the different levels of the programs. Maybe in one program is, they know the effect it has if they're overweight and how that can impact their, their overall health. And then the next level program is, well, if they do the program, maybe they know how to lose, how much to lose and how to lose it and have already demonstrated some success. Now, after that, we want to understand how we take them there. How will they do it? And how will I help them to do it? So that's the next part that we do in our planning process. And then we go into what do they need to learn? That gives me already as a course developer the idea of, okay, this is all the thing that I need to create. We can't take all our knowledge and put that into one course. It might be multiple courses. I often see that with clients that they are over, over planning. They're putting too much into a course. The effect is they, they never finish the course because they run out of steam and their clients are, are totally overwhelmed with all this wealth of information. They can't digest it, so they don't get the transformation. And then lastly, why do they want to do this? There is work in doing a course and, and going through a course. Why would they want to do that? So we want to tap into their purpose of doing this. So that's on the planning side. Now I have a, a quick look at the, at the graphic when I change over to the next slide and look at these arrows. 
So the errors are starting with the if, how, what, why, but when we're delivering, we're turning that around. We're actually delivering first with why. We want to engage people right away in our course. Then we want to teach them new information. Then we want to help them to practice and implement this, what they've learned. And then they affect you know, and the transformation is a natural outcome for that. So helping my clients to do this process can be, uh, for some people that can be really uh, the, big, the big gateway almost for them to walk through once they've got that to then actually be able to create the course. Now, as I said, if you have that impact and you have the influence on your clients, then the income will follow. Now, this is a chance when you create online courses to get you off the hamster wheel. You know, I don't know if you sometimes felt like that, you know, oh, here's another client, here's another coaching session. Oh my God, got to run from one appointment to the next. This can get you off the hamster wheel. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It would be a lie. There is a lot that goes into creation of programs and there's a lot that goes into marketing of programs. So it's not built them and they will come. But when you have a system of programs, it can be freeing for you. It can create you for you a location independent business of time independent business, a business where you can scale up from the 150 or from the 15 people to the 150 or 1500 people. So it can have that impact that you want to create on your clients and therefore also on your bottom line. Also, sometimes you will have clients who come to you and say, you know, I'd love to work with you, but I just, honestly, I just can't afford the rates. Huh, isn't it nice when you can then say, you know what, I have something for you. I have something that will help you to get the next step and it's not going to be that level of investment. So an online program helps you to do that. It helps you to be recognized as a, as a, um, as a specialist and it helps you to also offer clients something at a lower incoming rate and help them to do the next step without really using a lot of your time. And that means that you can typically raise your rates for your one-on-one -on -one services or your high-end services. So my clients, um, Greg and Antonia, they are from California, have the Self Health Institute, and I was working with them through their program creation and the structure of the program. And when we did that work, we actually go, uh, did something that I call the pre-selling technique. And this is when you start selling the program before you built it. They had $7,500 US in their bank account before they even started building the program. Now there's techniques that you need to use to do that, to be able to do that, but it's very, very effective, particularly for programs that create a depth in the transformation where you want to go deeper versus an online course that you want to, that is kind of a small and pre-recorded online course. So how do you do it? How do you get started? I heard that from a few of you who said, you know, I don't know how to get started. So the first piece is to design your strategy in your business which courses are going to be the magic courses for you? How do you build your, fun, your, your business model, the, the arrow? And then you wanna clarify your target audience. Do the exercises that you know, so we discussed, you know, all those areas, the graphics, the triggers. Hopefully nobody is now gonna fall asleep. <laughs> do I need to dance for the light to come back on? Um, clarify your target audience. And the third one is to build your signature system. So that is the system of um, the different courses that you will offer, the different level courses. And then ultimately market those courses. So if you're pre-selling, you market your courses even before you're starting the course. So those are the four steps that you need to do. And under the, the building and marketing is also the publishing of your courses. Deciding what's that platform that you want to use to bring, make your programs available. So at this point, I'd like to offer you, uh, make an invitation to you. And I said at the beginning that some of you raised some of your um, challenges that you have. You said, you know, I'm interested in learning about online programs. I'd like to do something, but I don't really know how to get started. I don't know how to structure it. And this is the invitation I'd like to expand to you as uh, BBN members and also as the online viewers of the BBN video. I have created a number of programs and these three programs I've just recently transitioned into a platform where they're available as a self-study course. Crystallize Your Niche is the course that is purely for understanding who your target audience is. 
understanding how to structure your target audience, building out your persona statement that gives you that guideline for your product creation and for your marketing. And um, Power on Your Freedom Biz takes that to the next step. Power on Your Freedom Biz, you actually build out your online business platform. Understanding who your audience is is one step then you're offering a lead magnet, something that gets them attracted to you. You need to put automation in place for doing that. You then offer um, a, an ongoing email, so a nurture campaign. You start doing videos. You then have a traffic campaign. So all those strategies are part of Power on Your Freedom Biz. In both of these courses, I take you through the process so that you can start developing your persona statement and your online business platform. Crystallize your niche, I used to sell for $500. Power on your freedom is close to $2,000. And then the Big League Bootcamp really is my signature program, and that's all about course creation. And I now offer that in four parts. The first part is about the strategy, understanding what you ultimately want to offer and build the strategy for your business. Second part is about planning, taking you through the process of planning what your course should look like learning about the learning styles, uh, styles in greater depth, getting an understanding what your learning style is, so that you're also cautious to uh, build your courses for all learning styles. And then the third part is about the creation of courses. How do you do the videos? What kind of videos are there? How do you uh, structure that? What do you need to buy? What resources do you need to have? Um, how do you uh, bring all that together with uh, ultimately with videos, audios, downloads, etc.? And the fourth part is about publishing and launching the course. So those four steps that I spoke about earlier are basically these four parts of the Big League Bootcamp. I used to sell the Big League Bootcamp for $5,000. It did include at that time interactive activities. So as I said, I've just transitioned this into a platform where they are available as self-study courses. And I want to offer that to you. Each one of these courses is available to you for $80. And so Power on Your Freedom is $80, Crystallize Your Niche $80, and each part of the Big League Bootcamp is $80. Now, how can you get access to that? You go to udemy.com and search for my name, Petra Mayer, and then you use the coupon PMC, it stands for Petra Mayer Consulting, to give you a little reminder, and then BBN, Vancouver Business Network. This is a special coupon specifically for the, for the members of BBN, the visitors here today, and anybody watching the video, and is going to be uh, available for you without any restrictions. I'll just let you, but I also have a, a handout for those who are here today uh, that gives you the information. Um, why would you want to do this? Well, some of you were saying you wanted more impact, you want to influence more people, and you also said that you want to go and create more debt, more transformation for your clients. These are tools that will help you to do that. So that's the, that's the big question for you. Is this a good time for you to do this? Is this an area that you want to explore and add to your business? Because it frees you up for your consulting business that you can then charge higher rates for. So online programs allow you to build that freedom, your location independence, whatever that looks like for you. It's now time for any questions that you might have to any of the content that I've provided. Uh, and I have my contact details up here as well. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about online courses, about um, how to go about that. Um, open to be open to the floor for questions. Roger. Is there a generic kind of a genre mm -hmm. of uh, course that seems to be really hot, that sells really well? Mm -hmm. Well, if, if there is a specific uh, genre, of course, that sells really well. I, I mean, I think that there is courses that sell well in many genres. And the way how you sell well is that you position the value that the course creates for the ideal audience that it is created for. So you connect to your ideal audience and then you, you position the value it creates. Now, selling well and making you lots of money, I think are still two different things. As I said, in some, uh, in some industries, the rates that people pay for courses are a lot lower. 
uh, if you are working business to consumer, typically your rates will be lower. If you're working business to business, the rates will be higher. If you're working in, an, in a niche that is large, you will be able to get more, more clients. If you're working in a niche that is more specific, you may be able to achieve higher rates, but you deliver more debt. Does that answer your question, Alex? That would help Roger? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, Alex. Yeah, so I would like to ask you about uh, what platform do you use uh, to host your, uh, like I know you use Udemy uh, for your courses. Is there any other platform that you recommend? And uh, also for lead generation. So what's your strategy? Do you use like a webinar to generate leads and sell your course through that? Or do you use ClickFunnel or like uh, running some campaigns on Google and YouTube? Like what are the strategies that you use to generate leads? Okay, so the first question was um, which platform I would recommend. Yes, my courses are on Udemy and that is specific because of the strategy change that I have done where I'm predominantly working as a consultant now versus as a course marketer. And uh, Udemy allows me to get the courses out to more people um, and also is a free platform to ultimately post your courses. Uh, on the other hand, Udemy also is a low cost platform. So it has some very substantial disadvantages too. Um, I have before worked with a platform called Rizuku. I really like Rizuku as an online course platform. It's not a good e-learning platform. Uh, ultimately, my belief is that we first need to understand what the needs are for your course and then find the right platform that satisfies those needs in the best possible way. Because everybody has different types of needs. Just before coming here today, I was speaking to a potential client. That client might need what is called multi-tenanting. Multi-tenanting is that I can provide a course and it looks like this for you and then I provide it to everybody over there and it looks different but it's the same course and it uses the same assets. And that multi-tenanting is not available in every platform. So you need to know that upfront before you start selecting your platform, what your needs are, and then choose a platform that can satisfy the needs and that still fits your budget. Platforms can be very expensive or they can be taking permission. They can also take your money and keep that money quite a long time. So there's a lot of things that you need to consider when you are selecting platforms. So unfortunately, it's one of those, it depends uh, answers. Now on the funnels, again, I think it depends. I think it depends on your audience. And it depends on, for example, if you work business to uh, business, doing a webinar that you host on Facebook isn't going to work. It's not going to sell your programs because you are in a business community. You need to actually do true business development, outreach, go and speak to the procurement manager, and uh, position your training inside of the organization. If you, however, work with, uh, let's say, women in their 50s who, have, um, who spend a lot of time on Facebook, then offering something through a webinar or a Facebook Live on Facebook can be very work, well, working really well. Now, the, the industry is changing, and people do not like to be on emails anymore. I don't know anybody here unsubscribing these days. I mean, I certainly am. So um, webinars don't get the same amount of traffic anymore. So marketing is definitely a challenge and it is changing and it depends on you positioning your programs to your target market in a way that, uh, that really connects with that target market. So the persona work is going to help you to understand where your target market is hanging out so that you design your marketing strategy around their needs. Again, unfortunately, another depends answer. Anything else? But right. thanks for the questions, Alex. Um, Francis first. Would you say the same rules apply to group coaching programs, or is it completely, mm. or is this specific for online courses? No, but when I actually say online courses, I include group programs in that because very often the group programs are also done online. So mm -hmm. I, you know, remember the continuum between live and and automated. A group coaching program can be in there and can be one of those drops in your arrow in your business strategy. So you start perhaps giving somebody an introductory course about weight loss and then they go into a group coaching program because now they have the trust and like factor. They believe that you can help them. And now the way how you will help them is that they need to join your group coaching program. And maybe you use some of your assets, the videos, etc., cetera, the, the teaching components for your group coaching program and help them um, with with that, that 
not everything is actually reliant on the interaction. Now, you also might have uh, the issue in, with your audience that some people may not want to be in a group. So maybe then you have another level up where you're actually helping people one to one. And then that's a higher end. And then people have choices. They can choose between these different programs and the investment level that um, of what helps them and what they can afford. Okay. Yeah, and the reason that they can tell us that uh, and I started to define and then increase the idea of the spending more effective method of that. But when we define the spread, so we want to have the differentiation of your different from others. How we say you can find yourself a different from others. Okay, I'm not sure that I understood everything. Could you speak up again? And oh, yes, of course. Um, you said that there's four steps yeah. to the kind of online program. And the first step is to define on your, side your strategy. strategy. Mm -hmm. And when you make this strategy to decide, how do you differentiate from other companies? Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, how you differentiate, when you're building your strategy, how do you differentiate from other companies? So again, if you if you, if we go back to the image of the bridge, where you build your bridge, where your uh, bridge uh, starts, that's very uniquely you because you bring your experience, you bring your aspirations and your goals to that business. So you want to show up in a certain way. So that is already quite unique for you. And then your clients are also having unique needs. So when you are positioning your business, you position on that on that value that you're creating for your clients that is uniquely you so if you're copying what somebody else is doing then it becomes very difficult for your clients to differentiate you and then the differentiation is going to be price access and price that can be a strategy for a mass marketer but if you want to be uh, taking creating that impact by going into greater depth then you will be uh, highlighting how you are creating that value that is uniquely your and will differentiate you automatically from from others. Does that does yeah, that make sense? I answer your question. But the only thing that I'm concerned is that the burden body will end up with the client end point. Yes. But sometimes they miss totally. They yeah. say, okay, I don't need to know. I, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. That's so when I look at the four, the two steps or the four steps, the first step being the business strategy, that takes that makes them look. The, I basically focus on my needs first so that I then choose a client that will fit that. Because my ideal client shouldn't be somebody that I have to twist myself in a pretzel in order to serve that client. It's not gonna last very long. So if you start with ideal client, and then you're like, oh, okay, so they want this. Now I've gotta do it this way because that's what they want. Then you will start actually giving away your power, your, your needs and your personal um, desires and what you want to achieve in your business. And that will be very difficult to maintain. So that's why I personally believe you need to start with your own position first, then your ideal client who would also then like that position. And then you go into defining the, the programs that help. You design the bridge, the bridge pieces, because those are the programs that will help, that will satisfy you and your clients. And everybody's gonna be happy. And that's your unique your USP then. Yeah, okay. That's right. Never ask. What is the time frame you get your place up and running? Yeah, good question. I mean, I, I know. I, I think that's the million it, it dollar depends, question. But average, I don't know. Yeah. So some people are very fast in how how they are going about this because they know systems. They don't have fear of showing up in front of a video camera. For some people, that can take three months to get them into the first video, but. Um, it also depends on the complexity of your program and um, and if you already have material. So I would think that three to four months is the minimum you should plan on. I, I And for most people, it will be more like six months. Yeah. Francis. Can you elaborate a, little, uh, a bit more on the designing strategy? I'm not quite sure if I understand what you mean by that. So in that first step, the you mean? Step, yes. So the strategy that would be, okay, so let's say I want to be location independent. Okay. Will I now design programs where I have to be in the same place as my client? Probably not. Because that would not, that would be a conflict in my strategy for my goals. So I need to first decide what kind of business do I want to have? And then you look at the type of program 
business that you would want to create. Some of my clients come to me and say, I want to have as little as possible to do with my clients. Well, they automatically go towards automation, mass products, low cost. They don't want to do coaching sessions. Now, if Renato came, he would probably say, I want to work with my clients one on one. So how does he implement that? Because that's what he loves to do. So we want to mm -hmm. first understand what is it that is important to us and then build the strategy around that, then find define our ideal client who wants that and then build the programs to deliver that, to achieve, you know, the overcome. You're talking about that spectrum, challenge. Right? Yeah. The spectrum, right? Yes. Fully outreach. Yeah. And typically, while I, I like uh, to work with people who want to build a system of programs, but at one stage you have to start with the first one. But knowing what the system will look like then helps us to decide which is the best system, the best program to start with and then focus on that one. And because we have the overall view, you will later not decide like, oh, now I've got this program. This honestly, this happened to me because I was just creating programs. I didn't have that idea at that. When I started out, I didn't have that idea that I needed to have this all encompassing a strategy. So I scrapped programs because they didn't fit my strategy anymore. And I want to avoid that for my clients. I want them to actually have a bigger vision first and then go back down into the more uh, tactical creation process. Any other questions? No, no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody, for your questions. Thank you. Awesome.